Coming up, it's all electric at Aero Friedrichshafen in Germany. Find out how the FAA reauthorization affects you. And flying an old Russian fighter on the airshow circuit. AOPA Live this week begins in just a moment. Build and fly with the Sonics Aircraft B models. The B models offer more room and comfort, more fuel, more panel space, more engine choices, and the same great Sonics Aircraft flight characteristics. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. This is AOPA Live This Week with Tom Haynes and Melissa Rudiger. Long-term funding for the FAA may finally be coming soon. This week, a six-year FAA reauthorization bill was introduced in the House, and it's a big deal for all segments of aviation. The reauthorization allocates FAA funding going forward. For years, the agency has operated under numerous extensions where current law carries over from the previous reauthorization. It kind of hamstrings the agency and, and makes it difficult for them to plan uh, projects and and, and change programs, and so uh, we really need to get out of that cycle. With this bill called H.R. 4, the cycle could finally be broken. Fortunately, the bill makes no mention of so-called air traffic control privatization. It does include important provisions for general aviation and prioritizes investments in airports. There's also a Senate FAA reauthorization bill in the works. Once both bills have cleared their respective chambers, a House-Senate conference committee will meet to iron out the differences but we're really hopeful we're going to help support get a long-term bill because that is really going to help the FAA and it's really going to help general aviation going forward. So Melissa, this has been a long time coming, finally a long-term FAA reauthorization bill. Your office those has been of, working on it. We have, those of us that have been fighting privatization, uh, we're really, really happy to see this get some, some momentum and there's a lot of good things in it for GA. You mentioned the airport investment. Right. We're really focused on getting investing at GA airports. Yeah, well that'll be so important stay tuned. stuff going forward. Hope it passes. The flying season has begun all over the Northern Hemisphere, and that means the start of a bunch of air shows and exhibitions. Last week, Sun and Fun. This week, the big show in Europe. Warren Morningstar joins us now from Germany, of all places. Well, guten tag, Melissa and Tom. Yeah, I guess you could say we, uh, we uh, travel the world to bring you general aviation news. I mean, it was just, uh, what, a couple of weeks ago that Tom, you and I were in New Zealand, and then we were all down in Florida for Sun and Fun. And now here we are in Germany, in Friedrichshafen, near the shores of Lake Constance and the Alps. You know, this is the largest general aviation event in Europe, and it clearly rivals some of the big shows in the U.S. Uh, Friedrichshafen has a storied aviation history featuring names like Zeppelin and Dornier. And when they decided to build a major exhibition space here, they echoed that history with halls resembling Zeppelin hangars light and airy, lots of space, and right on the airport. Well, smart move. This space is filled with shows year-round, bringing a lot of money into the town. This year, Aero Friedrichshafen, some 630 exhibitors from 38 countries, including a lot of the usual suspects from the U.S. But you know what makes Aero interesting is the innovation that we see coming out of Europe. With far fewer restrictions in the light sport category than in the U.S., some very slick designs. And the Europeans have a lot more regulatory flexibility when it comes to electric aircraft, too. And for that, we're going to go to uh, Tom Horn over in the E-Flight Expo. Tom? Hey, Warren. Well, this year at Aero, they're placing a heavy emphasis on the growing electric aviation segment here in Europe. And in fact, they've devoted an entire exhibit hall to electric aviation. Some of these designs are already flying and some of these are more fanciful in nature. Well, our plan is um, to spread the message that electric flight is possible. Just about every electric airplane flying today flies behind a motor from industrial giant Siemens. And they've steadily been pushing the envelope to advance battery and motor technology. And now we have, so to say, the third generation of the motor, of the control system. And uh, yeah, we are, we are testing this. We have more than 200 hours on the plane and gaining experience and uh, bringing this experience into the larger aircraft that we are also working on. Currently flying are two models built in conjunction with Magnus aircraft from Hungary. One's a pure electric version flying behind a 75 horsepower motor. It made its first public flight here at Aero. 
the two-seater can fly for about 40 minutes on battery power. Another experimental Magnus design uses a hybrid system with a small diesel motor from a Mercedes smart car. And uh, we optimized it for flight conditions. For example, we uh, implemented a new control system with uh, an ECU with, and uh, changed the, ma the mapping completely for flight conditions. The diesel drives an electric generator which feeds the 100 horsepower motor and recharges the battery. And Siemens has more test beds in mind. For larger aircraft, uh, uh, even uh, we will electrify one out of four gas turbines of the BAE 146 together with Airbus and Rolls Royce. Uh, we will electrify a um, kind of a hovercraft um, quadrocopter together with Airbus, which is the city Airbus. Twin brothers Jan and Ivo Prokov from the Czech Republic are just months away from certifying their electric motor glider. So we are Phoenix Pure Flight System and we are here to change the era of flying. The Phoenix is powerful enough that it can tow another glider into the air. And we, we have something which we call a pump station, which is a charger which you can use for charging the plane and also for the cars. You can charge up to 10 cars or 10 planes or any mix of that through this charger. They plan to install chargers around the Czech Republic and ultimately the rest of Europe. Pipistrel's Alpha Electro is already flying in Europe, Australia, Canada, and California. The two-seat trainer is powered by an 80 horsepower Siemens motor and can fly for about an hour on a charge. So what we are doing is we are working with methanol, which is a nice and easily handled fuel. You could basically carry it in a bucket and we perform onboard reformation using Catholic, Catholic, catalytic steam reformers uh, where we separate, uh, where we combine methanol and, and water and generate uh, hydrogen and uh, carbon dioxide. And the hydrogen then goes through the fuel cell and generates the electricity that we need to, uh, need to run the motors. The Antares E2 is designed as a remote sensing platform. Two underwing pods carry the methanol fuel and the fuel cells. The other pods can carry radar or other sophisticated remote sensing payloads. This aircraft can stay aloft for up to 40 hours. This is a mock-up. The real aircraft is scheduled to fly in June. Okay, a lot of the aircraft here in the E-Flight Expo are either prototypes or uh, proof of concept airplanes. Uh, this discopter is uh, meant to be an urban air taxi. This thing has a single fan powered by two 450 horsepower automobile engines. They're looking for investors. So hey Warren, this is your chance to get in on the ground floor. Ah, uh, gosh, uh, gee, thanks Tom, but I think that thing should stay on the ground. A couple more notes here from Arrow. Uh, Piper announced that it will be offering a Jet A fueled PA44 Seminole. The twin-engine trainer will be powered by two Continental CD-155 diesel engines, swinging counter-rotating props, and pumping out 170 horsepower each. It will also have single-lever FADEC controls. And there's an app for that. I sometimes fly, and I'm lucky to get to fly the TBM from time to time, and I have absolutely no way to know remotely. I mean, I, I, I can't put my eyes on gauges or power up the engine, the aircraft to know what is the amount of fuel that is left on board. Well, this application is going to provide you the answer right away. So basically, without any further delay, you can just order your fuel. You can ask your land guide to basically uh, uh, put on board the amount of fuel that you want. Announced at Aero, me and my TBM. Every time you land, all the data from your flight is uploaded to a central server and then pushed to your iPhone app. You can review the details at your leisure or share data with your TBM flying friends. TBM plans to analyze the data so that they can be proactive, that is, alerting you to possible maintenance or operational considerations. And they say all of this sharing will be fun. And that's it from Arrow. Back to you and Frederick. Okay, thanks Warren. We'll look forward to hearing more next week when you get back. While Europe has an appetite for electric trading aircraft, China is ordering a bunch of Avgas-powered Cessna Skyhawks. 
Two different Chinese companies ordered a total of 52 172s. They'll be used for flight training, aviation clubs, and a variety of other uses. It's part of China's effort to grow general aviation and flight training. One of the staples of flight training is King Schools. For over 40 years, John and Martha King have been teaching pilots to fly or learn new skills. Starting with VHS tapes, the King's material evolved over the years to CDs and DVDs. Now King Schools announced no more discs. From now on, all the King's content will be in their new online library. It's pretty amazing. You know, have you been to their place? I have. I and, have. And you remember they have this wall of uh, duplicating uh, VHS uh, system and then later DVDs, and so it's going to free up a lot of space in their offices, if nothing else. They are icons of flight training, and it's nice to see an icon continue to evolve right. and keep up pace with technology, that and is, that, that yeah. is John and Martha King. That is. Well, one area where pilots could use some training is aviation weather. That's according to a new study by Elizabeth Blixenderfer of Embry-Riddle. For the research, a variety of pilots took an exam about aviation weather. How'd they do? Well, the mean score was only around 58%. As expected, instrument-rated pilots performed the best, but were still stumped by 35% of all the questions. Training isn't the only factor, they say. Researchers also said weather information needs to be displayed more clearly so pilots can interpret it easily and quickly. It was a well-done study and provided us some insight and helped us realize that we're not as knowledgeable on weather and the products associated with weather as we need to be. So. Um, it was, uh, it was instructional on that point that we all need to uh, get our heads in the books a little more so we can understand what these products are telling us. And the AOPA Air Safety Institute has dozens of tools to help you learn more about aviation weather. One of the tools is a new video about in-cockpit weather products and weather data links. In recent years, data link weather in the cockpit has become an indispensable tool for many GA pilots. It's also played a role in the historic decline in weather accidents over the past decade. And we here at the Air Safety Institute consider equipping with data link weather one of the most effective and cost-efficient ways to make your flying safer. The video is brought to you by Sirius XM Aviation. You can find it on the Air Safety Institute homepage. Coming up after the break, bringing the public out to the airport. And meet the team that makes this old Russian fighter shine. You're watching AOPA Live this week. There are many important things to consider before purchasing an aircraft. Let the experts at Aerospace Reports help guide you through the process. We combine expert knowledge with our long-standing commitment to personalized customer service to perfect your transaction. Learn more at aerospacereports.com. Welcome back. We enjoyed seeing many of you at Sun and Fun in Lakeland, Florida last week. Despite some wet weather at the beginning and the end of the week, thousands came out to see the performers airplanes and stop by the AOPA Village to see the new Sweepstakes Super Cub. On Friday at Sun and Fun, we celebrated a big milestone, the one-year birthday of Basic Med, AOPA's victory in the fight for third-class medical reform. After a presentation on Basic Med, attendees were asked to help celebrate. So uh, what we wanted to do is just bring a little birthday cake in the back because May 1st is the first anniversary of Basic Med. It went into implementation of May 1st. Since then, we've had over 33,000 pilots fly under basic med, so um, that's all good news. And so we invite you to have a piece of birthday cake and celebrate basic med with us. And more pilots are flying under basic med all the time. You can find all you need to know about basic med on our websites. Sun and Fun is just the beginning of a busy flying season. In a couple weeks, on May 5th, AOPA's headquarters in Frederick, Maryland will be hosting an event to get the public out to the airport called Wings and Wheels. Wings and Wheels is a combination of classic cars, aircraft, motorcycles, food trucks, live music, fun for the kids. It's a party at the airport. Find out everything you need to know at, about Wings and Wheels at our website. And if you know of an airport that would be perfect for hosting an aviation event, let us know. AOPA is looking for future destinations for our regional fly-ins. The AOPA event planning team has issued a nationwide request for proposals. The fly-ins have grown into major events that draw thousands of visitors and hundreds of aircraft. The first fly-in this year, Missoula, Montana, June 15th and 16th. Hope to see you there. Finally this week, we leave you with a story about one of the performers from Sun and Fun. AOPA associate web editor David Tulis brings us the story of what it takes to keep an old Russian fighter flying on the air show circuit. Flying just off the deck at nearly 700 miles per hour, Airshow pilot Randy Ball wows crowds in his MiG-17F. 
It's a fulfillment of the love of aviation he's had since he was young. It's just been eating up with it since I was a, since I was a kid, you know. My dad was a private pilot and took me to the air shows and, I mean, the hook was set long, long ago. The MiG is unique on the air show circuit. The Russian fighter designed in the mid-50s served in a variety of military roles around the world. Our history with him, of course, is over Southeast Asia, uh, fighting him in, in uh, Vietnam. It was the tightest turning aircraft of the Vietnam War, which makes it uniquely adaptable to the air show circuit in the United States. So you have an aircraft with near F-16 type performance that can pull AG turns, uh, go vertical, afterburner. And it takes a dedicated crew to keep this old bird in safe flying condition. Randy relies on his crew chief, Aaron Kelly, she is the only female crew chief, or as she would say, plane captain, as being ex-Navy, uh, in the industry. Aaron is responsible for maintaining the aircraft, helping Randy get situated, and giving the final go-ahead before the airplane takes off. When I take off, the first maneuver I do is roll upside down right off the ground. If everything's not perfect, it could be bad day. So the trust I have with that lady is uh, immense. Randy sees Aaron as a role model for all the young women that come to air shows. I think that's great for girls to see that they can do it too, right? They can be pilots, they can be mechanics, they can be avionics people. So many times we meet girls on the air show circuit and they're like, well, you know, if I was a guy, I would do that. I'm like, you can do that. And I can point at Aaron and say, look, see? Women are picking up more and more roles that were considered a uh, men's job, uh, but they're completely capable and it's fun, it's not out of a woman's range, you know, physically or mentally. So if you have an interest in aviation or airplanes or anything to do with the field, go for it. Randy and Aaron don't just inspire women in aviation. Randy hopes to inspire everyone in the crowd just as he was inspired as a kid. As a kid to be that excited about it, I'm still that excited about it. And to see that kind of excitement and help promote that excitement on the next generation, that's probably the biggest paycheck this whole thing gives me. David Tulis, AOPA Live. So that's really inspiring to me anyway to see uh, women in increasingly in non-traditional roles. Right. Yeah, it's lots more women be getting involved in aviation. That's great to see and great to see them inspiring youth as well. Absolutely. And I'll be, I'll be glad when it isn't a big thing when a woman's yeah. in a non-traditional role. Good point. Well, that does it for us this week. Hope to see you back next week for another AOPA Live this week. Thanks for watching. See you then. Meet the pilots who fly with AOPA Insurance. They love flying and saving money, just like you. At AOPA Insurance, we understand how you fly and provide the coverage you need to keep on flying. Call for a free quote and see which AOPA Insurance plan is right for you.